There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mount Merloni is about to blow up right now with Gresh and Fourier because as we sit here, we've talked about all of the possibilities. Bill Belichick, could he be gone? Could he be traded? Da da da. You know, Lou? Mm hmm. You, you you know sports radio and the Red Sox better than anybody. If they gave us something to talk about, we'd talk about it, Lou. Where are you at that as we sit here on the day of our Lord, uh, December 15, 2023, <laughs> Looks and the notes. Red Sox have done nothing? Well, konnichiwa, my good friend. Oh, yes. Um, konnichiwa, bitches. Uh, I'm still on this Yamamoto watch. And I'm still waiting to see what happens there, to be honest with you. I think a lot of everything's going to unfold after that. Um, it's been quiet. It's, it's like the Red Sox, they, listen, they know they need starting pitching. They need a couple of guys. They need a second baseman. And then it's sort of like, you know, there's some fringe things you want to do with depth and, and you know, high-level pitching and get some depth at AAA. It's like they've done that. But they're sort of missing the big stuff, right? And I think Yamamoto's kind of holding this whole thing up. So hopefully this thing gets done by next week. So, um... Have you been jealous about of all the movement that's going on with some of these other teams? Uh, you know, and if you are into Yamamoto, does the uh, does the idea of who did the Dodgers just sign Glasnow? Did they just yeah, trade, trade for him? What does yeah. that mean to you when you see? Does it mean that the Dodgers are out on Yamamoto? Then there's a better chance, and that's one less team interested in him. You know, you know listen, it's like. By the time this interview is over, Yamamoto could sign with the Dodgers, right? Or the Mets, or the Yankees, or whatever. Personally, I think the Dodgers were out when they signed Otani. That's just my opinion. And 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 going after Glass now and being a perfect match with the kid that they gave up, who was very very good, and extending him. Uh, I don't know. People say they can still go out and get him, but we just we we assume that this guy Yamamoto wants to play with Otani. I mean, if that was really the case, it'd be done by now. Like, like Yamamoto's the three times in a row he won a Cy Young out in Japan, you know, and, and th this guy's a stud. And imagine if in America there was only one sport, just football, no other sports in our country. How do you think that would impact Tom Brady's life and, like, how we look at him? Just one sport, and it's just Tom Brady. That's who he is. So I don't think he wants to be second fiddle to the Otani show. So to me, it's like they went out and they made a great trade with Glasnow. And they got a kid who's really, really good now in Tampa Bay. And because it's Tampa, somehow they'll end up winning that trade. Lou, I just can't believe that we're at this point and we don't even know if Yamamoto gave the Red Sox a meeting. Are they viewed as afterthoughts when it comes to the high-end guys in the market? Because 20 years ago, and you know this, you were just kind of like coming out of the game the Red Sox were always getting meetings. They were always front and center. Now Yamamoto gets a – he meets with the Phillies before he meets with the Red Sox? Yeah, if that's the case. All right, fair. Maybe he's working his way east. You know, um, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure. It's like a stopover, layover in Philly. No, what I understood, I'm pretty sure everything is going on out in California where his representatives are. Right. So um, – but I'm how not so does, sure that's the case. But does, to be honest Dom, with you. I but think does, that to me they, they did have something with him, but you know, we'll see. I mean, I don't know, waiting for someone to come out and actually say it. It's one team that really has been quiet on that front. Um, and that sort of goes into detail of, you know, we've been here before. And speaking of Otani, it seemed like he forgave Dave Roberts for talking about the meeting. Oh yeah. Um, but I'm sure that was sort of in play with him as well. You know, that's just kind of it's different. See, we We've, we've looked at this, this free agency in the eyes of like an American or a current player in the big leagues where it's about money, it's about marketing, it's about playing teams off one another, and we have to stop doing that. You know, and this is what I was talking about with him. As far as money goes, that's great, but maybe he doesn't want to be second fiddle to Otani. Maybe he wants to keep things quiet. You know, we don't know the priorities, what he's looking for. He, he wants to be the guy. He's always been the guy. You know, nobody thought Otani was going to sign with the Angels. Nobody knew. Nobody knew he wanted to play with Trout. We were like, what? You know, and, and so um, it's just it's a different view. I don't know how quiet he wants to keep things, but I do think that the Sox, I think they're involved in this. I think they, I think they, think they got a shot. Um, is Yamamoto worth the numbers we're hearing? And I know we can always do the, oh, no one's worth $700 million, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But yeah. this guy hasn't thrown in the big leagues. Yep. And, Lou, it feels like we're going over $300 million for this player, it seems. Yeah, no, I think he's worth more. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and, here's, and, and listen, here's why. To me, it's like it's, it's the guy you got to get. 
Um, he's 25 years old. You're never going to see it again. You're going to have a, be not, been in the big leagues at 19 years old and be an absolute stud for six years and hit free agency at 25. And if that's the case, they're going to re-up you at 22 or 23. You're not going to see a free agent stud at 25 years old. You're just not going to do it. That's not attached to anything. He's that good. And here's the thing. Talk about translating. The game is translating to America. And even more so now, when you look at a guy like a Yamamoto, the, the, but with the metrics, right, with the pitch shaping, with the science, the technology, they can look at it and say, damn, you know, his split has a vertical drop of this. That is what Otani's does. His slider's got a horizontal movement with this. His spin rate is this. His fastball's got vertical movement and spin rate, very similar to this dominant fastball. All of his pitches match dominant pitches in the big leagues. Damn. So I'm just sitting here. Uh, so if the Dodgers were were able to um, bring Otani, Mookie Betts, and Freeman to their meeting with Yamamoto, yeah. who, which three players would you pluck off the Red Sox current roster that so you would think would give you the best opportunity to convince Yamamoto to sign with the Sox? <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, listen. Uh, hey, if he, I think I know your no, answer, but, but to lose point, I will give you an answer. If, right? If, if Yamamoto, give you an answer. if Yamamoto really wants to be the man, yeah. lose chuckle is like, well, Yamamoto will learn yes. right away that he's the star. No, oh, yeah, that's no. true. And here's, here's the answer because you gave me current, and and I would say number one, Kelly Olynyk's got to be there. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Put him on the list. Number two, <laughs> I would bring I would bring one man, and that would be Pedro Martinez. Oh, that's it. And I would have Pedro talk about what Pedro night was like. I would have him talk to his agent, translator, whoever, and talk about the Dominican flags that overtook Fenway Park and how the pride that he had in that community. And I would, you know, that is what I would be talking to him about and trying to explain to him what every fifth day would look like in that ballpark for him. So and I guess if, if you are... If you do want to run your own family, because that's what it seems like, like I want to run my own family, I don't want to be, you know, second to anybody. Then, even though Boston is a uh, small city, uh, but the market and the eyeballs and the TVs and the games will be big, right? Because that's what you're selling. You're literally the big fish in the small pound in, yeah. the, in the small pond. Listen, you got to get close to it financially. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know, but you why? Be, why do you think they you know? do? Is it isn't money like not an option? Like, isn't that not part of a that's not a, an issue anymore because I they said they were willing to spend and they're they were willing to do the whole full throttle thing. Like, isn't that so? Money shouldn't be an option, right? Well, we'll see. I mean, they're idling right now. We're not exactly going many places, you know. Maybe they're just sort of waiting for this, and maybe that's where the full throttle will come in. I, you know, I I don't know, but yeah, you, know, you got to be close to it, and you know all those things. I mean, I think they're and and this is why I thought they were out of it, you know. And I just figured like it was going to be a money thing and just. You know, and, and that sort of opinion changed talking to some people. And I just feel like that he, you know, he goes to New York, like the L.A. thing. He doesn't even pitch opening day. He's not even the best pitcher on the team, you know, and he just sort of blends in with Soto, who's going to be new and people are going to be going nuts and judge and Cole. You've got the Otani factor out in L.A. You know, you've got the Mets, but it's still the Mets. You know, San Fran, walk him around the city. He'll leave there in five minutes. You know, <laughs> Toronto, I mean, it's just like yeah. they're out of it. So. You just when you start thinking about it in terms of okay, maybe this guy wants to be the guy, he wants this, he wants that, and you start looking and saying, Well, I'm already hearing about how the Yankees and the Mets are in on maybe Imanaga or Snell on as a as a plan B. And it's like, Well, Steve Cohen, they didn't tax after you. You said you're gonna pay whatever it took to get this guy. Now you're thinking about plan B. What do you know? You know, same thing with New York, same thing with LA, going to get glass now. So I don't it's just to me, honestly, I worry more about Philly. I worry about Dave Dombrowski mm -hmm. sitting at the table and just dropping him right oh, on there. That's, yep. like, you're my guy. That's that's why I brought up Philly because Dombo's capable of anything. Yeah. So, Lou, when Yamamoto goes elsewhere, where do the Red Sox pivot? Montgomery. You know, and I think Montgomery and the other Japanese player, Imanaga, is another one that um, I think is intriguing. Um, you know, the fastball doesn't play as much, but obviously there's some there's some good numbers. The kid's a good pitcher out in Japan. But I think Montgomery, you know, is the next big guy to go. I think Snell, uh, whether he wants to be on the West Coast or not, kind of scares me. You know, I, I don't know, 130 innings a year until he's a free agent that he gives me a buck 80. I, it's a little David Price vibe to me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Walks like five, six guys a game. If the stuff starts to diminish, you know, those walks start to kill him. Like, that makes me nervous. But so 
I think it's Montgomery. The minute, if, if you lose out on Yamamoto, you got to go all in on Montgomery. you got to get this guy. So the other thing I think was interesting this week was uh, this report about uh, Alex Cora and how you know other teams are you know interested in him once his contract is over. Uh, what do you think the likelihood of him leaving is? You know, I think right when they hired Breslow, you guys, I did talk to you guys about Cora, and I expected an extension to be named. But three days after that, Craig Council signed five years, $40 million, eight per, and has never won a World Series. <laughs> and my first thought was, maybe Alex doesn't want one. You know, doesn't want an extension. Mm. And, and I do wonder if, like, he's got that kind of clout and he's close with those players enough to where, you know, he doesn't lose a clubhouse. You know, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to, you know, have a, have a manager on one-year deal that the guy's not going to believe in him or play hard for him. So, you know, I don't know where the extension goes. But it, it, which is, to me, really puts more on, on Cora to sort of sit there and push this front office and say, hey, by the way, like, you know, I could be a free agent at the end of the year. Could you give me a starter or two so we win a couple games? Because three last place finishes, I'm not, I don't know how that helps my free agency. I like it. It's, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Lou, I read a thing from Sean McAdam earlier today that it might be, for lack of a better way of putting it, DH by committee. Yeah. And I see, like, Hunter Renfro goes to the freaking Royals. And, again, I know he was here, but he also hit 30 bombs. I'm seeing guys like that go for $6.5 million, and it's, oh, well, the Red Sox might rotate at DH. That position used to be somebody who could come in and rake and hit. Mm -hmm. What do you make of what – seems like would be a bit of a philosophical shift at that DH spot. Well, I mean, you've always said like David Ortiz, you know, and, and when you have something like that, then, you know, DH is very important or JD Martinez. Yeah. Right. So a real hitter, real yeah. hitters. And those guys aren't out there. You know, I mean, the, the best right-handed free agent hitter is Justin Turner, you know, I mean, or, or Solaire, you know, but I think the flexibility has a lot to do with the defense you get out in left field. You know, we we don't. I don't. You know, no, you don't want. You know, I mean, uh, you don't want Yoshida hitting. Uh, you know, playing left field, 135 games. Mm. You know, I want him out there 50, 60 games. You know, and that's where I think Tyler O'Neill kind of comes into play, and you can kind of move some guys around. So Tyler O'Neill, the kid they got from St. Louis, he is Hunter Renfro, he is Adam Duvall, but a better defender, in my opinion. You know, so he is. He's those guys that 30 home run potential, right? And, Nobody liked Hunter Renfro deal before they got it. They said, "What this kid strikes out all the time. He True. hasn't hit that many home runs, you know." And Duvall, it was like, "Okay, we like him, but you know, power, but what's he, you know?" So it's this kid kind of fits that mold. And if there's an Ortiz out there, like JD Martinez, like it was back in 2018, yeah, you go get him. But they just don't exist right now in free agency. Well, this was depressing. I was going to say, this <laughs> left me with uh, an empty, just you know, irritating taste in my mouth. Yamamoto. I guess I guess that's it. All in on Yamamoto. Dude. I saw that you changed your your little avatar too to Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah. I just can't stop. I mean, why? Why? Why stop? I mean, while he's still out there, I'm going to enjoy this because I think uh, uh, I, I, I would really appreciate if they got him. I think they should invite you to this meeting. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, quick question though. Just talk to me. Um, where where do you come down on eggnog? I'm not a fan of eggnog. Thank you. Yeah, this is not. thank you stuff. Like, so what? That's one person. I don't like eggnog. Well, Fourier, you castigated. He does also don't think ham Hold on. is a Christmas dish. No, it's but, not. No, but it's for, Easter. But Fourier also uh, <laughs> shunned and castigated me as yeah. if I was some kind of weirdo for not liking eggnog. Listen, listen, Gresh, first off, this is a guy that takes tortilla chips and dips it in his bolognese sauce. Oh, jeez. Okay? He so came let's not, away let's, my... let's, not, let's not take too much advice from him. I mean, uh, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a what a I mean just your that's an opus. <laughs> just drop the mic. That is it. <laughs> Lou, thank you, buddy. Uh, that was a hell of a zing. We appreciate you. Hopefully, Yamamoto. Oh, man. Bolognese sauce, Oh, by that's the way. great. <laughs> Lou, Lou uh, hopefully we have plenty of reason to talk to you over the next month. Uh, arigato gozaimasu. Goodbye. Uh, there later. you go. All right.